What's up everyone? My name is Cody Engel, and in this video we are going to talk about the let scope function, and also kind of just set us up for the rest of the other scope functions, so talking about the run scope function, the with scope function also, and apply. This will have a little bit of setup work, but I'm hoping we can get through that pretty quickly. With that, we'll just come over here. We will create a new Kotlin filer class. This one is going to be a file, and we'll call it let. So we can go ahead and minimize our navigation. We'll zoom in on this a bit. And then I'm just going to actually copy in some code, which I already wrote, just to kind of get us off the ground. So we, we're going to have a fictional person with the first name, last name, and age, and address, gender, whether they have a Facebook, a Twitter, and their occupation. And then we'll also have this address. Let me put this on separate lines just for readability's sake. So we have a number, a street, city, state, and zip code. So that should be everything that we need to get started there. So we'll create our main function. This is where we will run all of our code, all of our examples. And with that, let's just get started. So we'll have um, our fictional person be named Homer. So we'll have fictional person. And then again, just for the sake of time, I'm gonna go ahead and copy in some values Feel free to pause the video though if, uh, if you want to type them in. But we have our first name, Homer, last name, Simpson, age, 39, address is 742 Evergreen Terrace, Springfield, Oregon. I learned while doing this video that I guess The Simpsons is based in Oregon. And with that, we'll just do our print line with Homer. And what this is going to do is it'll just kind of show us what we're, what we're working with. So we go ahead, we run this. We have Homer 39 at that address. So now you're probably asking yourself, well, when, when do I use the let scope function? When, when might I want to use it? One route is when you want to say, let's say we want to change the address. And it's just going to be moving the, not the city, but the state and the zip code. So for the longest time, I thought The Simpsons was based in Springfield, Illinois, just because that's where I come from. And so for that, uh, we'll just change the address to what I always thought it was. Uh, so we'll say let, and then you'll see here we can do it dot state equals Illinois, and then it dot zip code equals sixty two sixty two nine. So that's that's one one situation when you might use it where we can do then our print line. We go ahead, if we rerun the code, we will see that it has now been changed to Springfield, Illinois. And so that's that's an interesting part of, of the let function, though, because within this, we're able to change the address on, on this variable. So this Homer variable has a mutable data structure. And so when we call it state, it zip code, it is the same as if we said homer address dot state equals Illinois. Though this and this are functionally, they're functionally the same. Now, one thing that's recommended for not just scope functions, but just any sort of higher order function in general, where you may have the uh, it keyword here, is if it's multi-line, you should really assign it an actual name. And so we'll just call this one address and then address address. So this ends up saving us from having to do homer.address a bunch of times. We just set it up here for the scope function. We give it the variable of address and then we just have to call address.state. Now, another thing that you might be wondering is with any sort of expression, it has a return value. And so we can do val returned equals to see what does is, what is returned end up equaling. So we go ahead, we run it. And then you can see here it returned Kotlin unit. That's because we didn't have any value at the end of here. When we're, when we're setting zip code equal to 62629, this is just, its return type here is just unit. If we wanted this to say be equal to the address that we just set, we can do that and then run. And then you'll see right here we have address 
742 Evergreen Terrace, Springfield, Illinois, zip code there. But the other scope functions in terms of like what they return, there's other scope functions that you can use that are going to be a little bit more applicable to it. So for now, we'll leave it at that and then we'll get on to the next part of why you might use the let scope function. So the next one, we will have a new fictional character, and this is going to be used to show nullable types. We're going to bring Marge Simpson into the mix. Marge is going to be a fictional person. And then let's say in this case, we want to, well, we'll one print out Marge just to show where we're at. And then let's say we want to change Marge's address. So Marge's address is still in Springfield, Oregon. So let's say we want to do Marge the long way. If we wanted to say Marge dot address dot um, actually Marge dot address equals Homer dot address. So we have that functionally. This will this will change the address for us. But if we want to use the scope function, the let scope function, we can also just do Marge let and then set it equal to a person. And then we can say person dot address equals homer dot address. And then, you know, they're, they're functionally the same. A single line let like this, that's not exactly beneficial really. Um, so, you know, we can say, well, maybe we also want to make sure that Marge's um, gender is set. So female, and then let's just say, Marge does have a Facebook, but Marge doesn't have a Twitter. And then we can do our print line with Marge again. We go ahead down here, we run the code. And we can see Marge, Simpson. The first one is Oregon. The second one, so with the let function, we're setting it equal to Illinois. And then we're also setting um, her gender, Facebook, Twitter, all of that good stuff. Now, you might be wondering though, so we have the let function. What happens if, you know, right after we print out Marge, we set this equal to null? And then we rerun the code, what happens? Well, you'll notice that essentially all of this gets skipped over because this person is only going to run, or this let function, only runs when Marge, whatever is on the right side of it, or sorry, the left side, is non null. Now, what happens if we want to do some default? Let's say, let's say that we expect that Marge is going to be non null, but in the case that Marge is null, maybe we want to do something. Maybe we just want to set it equal to whatever whatever Marge was going to be equal to in the first place. We can have this function and then we can tell it that if it's null, we want to run or invoke this function. Now we go ahead, we run this code and we can see right here. So this is, this is Marge being null. We have it set equal to Oregon. Now you can of course make this shorthand like that um, or if you just want it to be, you know, more likely the case, you just want to say, whoops, Marge is actually null. Isn't that bad? And then you run it and then you can see right here, we then print out this that says, oops, it's null. Isn't that, isn't that bad? Just a, just a quick summary then. So the let scope function, when you're using it, it gives you an object to reference, and the object reference type is going to be the it keyword, unless you give it a variable, which if it's a multi-line let, you should give it a name. And so that's why we have person here, and then further up here when we were just modifying the address, we have that as well. The other thing to keep in mind is this, the return value for a let is going to be the last statement that is executed. And so if you're just changing values around, more than likely it's going to return unit. But in you know other situations where maybe this let is you want to build a completely different data type, you want to map it to something else, that's sort of where the, the return type can, can come in handy with that. Anyway, though, 
that is going to be it for talking about the let scope function. I hope that this video gave a bit more insight into kind of when you would use them. So if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the other scope function videos that are going to be coming out very soon. And other than that, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.